Okay, so uh, this game is called Freedom Bridge. It was created by Jordan Magnuson as part of his game trekking uh, initiative. Essentially what he did was he traveled to various countries in the world and learned about their history, learned about their culture. And what he did was he made games based off what he saw to try and convent, convey what he felt as he was visiting these countries. And Freedom Bridge is one of the first games that he made as part of that whole initiative. And it's a really short game, only about two minutes, and I'm going to save most of my commentary for the end of it. So you start just a cube uh, or a square walking and uh, basic controls, very simplistic graphics. I like the uh, ambiance as part of the background audio. Square certainly has a lot of weight because every time you go through that barbed wire, the character actually gets hurt a bit, and his speed decre decreases. You can see the blood trails, and all of these convey the idea of like harm. The final bridge and the square is almost there, almost crossed. If you believe that games can't be art, honestly, you really don't have a lot of fuel for that argument. This is a perfect example of how mechanics, like interactive mechanics, can be used to convey emotions or convey a sort of artistic message. In this case, hopelessness. Now, there's a couple of problems with the industry today, and one of the things is, like, we kind of implicitly view games as toys, almost purely rec recreational objects. And uh, this is pretty evident in the fact that when we think about the value of games, they're often value based off how fun they are, and how long they are, like how long you can continue to play them. But this really only worked for a certain type of games, like the Assassin's Creed and the Call of Duties. But for a game such as this, something like fun is really irrelevant. It's not fun to play the game. The biggest part about the mechanics is that they give a they give an air of hopelessness. It's sort of that ambiance. Those are the biggest parts of this game. And the length is also irrelevant, because this game is exactly how long it needs to be. And because of these reasons, I kind of have really no critiques about this game, because it does exactly what you it intends to do. Not to say that it's the best game ever made, but it's certainly very, very concise in its uh, presentation. And here's the thing, though. I would like to see more games like this. More big-name games. Do these, uh, sort of lean to more of this emotional side of the game development process. And this doesn't mean that the CODs and Assassin's Creed should go away, but we should probably see more of this in mainstream titles. And here's the thing, though. Fun and thought-provoking are not necessarily mutually exclusive ideas. In fact, if you look at the Mass Effect series, it has a very, very emotional story, and Skyrim's design evokes a very large sense of um, scale and wonder. And both of these are pretty good examples of mainstream games being used as conduits for emotion. Now, I think this is really necessary for games to be taken seriously in the future. We should push for, uh, push for high higher and more emotional experiences to take the industry higher than ever before. Signing off, this is Indie Game Impressions.